The PlayStation Core has added a feature not available on a real PlayStation. There is now the ability to enable a real CPU data cache. This gives you the added benefit of increasing the frame rate in games. This even works without the need for an additional RAM stick. It's an optional debug feature, so if it causes problems, you can always disable it. On Twitter, the developer posted screenshots of the speed increases in some games. In Diablo, you can see the frame rate going from 19 frames per second to 25 frames per second. In Glover, you can see the frame rate going from 24 frames per second to 32 frames per second. King's Field gets a nice speed bump going from 20 frames per second to 30 frames per second. Another feature added to the core are exact video timings for PAL and NTSC analog video. So you should now get a correct aspect ratio and much improved analog output on the PlayStation Core. Before, when trying analog output, I would get a ship to screen if things worked correctly, but most of the games would display a rolling image and incorrect colors. Now, all the games I've tried are working perfectly. I have my Mr. Setup connected through composite to a 13 inch television. Core developer Hotego has officially released his System 16 core to the public, so you no longer need to be a Patreon member to obtain it. You won't be able to obtain it using the standard Mr. Updater. You will either have to download it and install it manually from his JTBin GitHub, or you can install the update all script on your Mr. FPGA to have it automatically installed. The System 16 was arcade hardware developed by Sega. It ran games such as Fantasy Zone, Shinobi, Alien Syndrome, Altered Beast, Golden Axe, and many more. It's a great core for fans of Sega arcade games. Hotego also hinted at support for 5x crop. Because of overscan, some games would allow for extra space at the top and bottom of the screen area. This will allow you to use 5x crop with integer scale in 1080p and no important information being cut off. To get a great detailed explanation on why you would want to use 5x crop, check out a post regarding this on RetroRGB. A link will be in the description. Hotego has also released beta cores for Sly Spy and Boulder Dash. These do require Patreon subscriptions, so please support him if you're interested in these cores or appreciate the work he does. If you've purchased an aluminum Mr. FPGA case from Mr. Add-ons, there is now a conversion kit for users who want to replace an analog I.O. board to a digital one. This will help those who want to switch to a digital I.O. board so they can add a second RAM stick to their Mr. setup. The price of the conversion kit is $10. Mr. Vendor Ultimate Mr. is going to start selling a new all-in-one MT32 Pi setup. This will include a Raspberry Pi 02W, two heatsinks, a micro SD card, a USB 3.0 cable, and a stand and case with built-in screen. It will be assembled and ready to go and cost 80 euros. If you want a more compact MT32 Pi, you will also be selling the MT32 Pi Lite, which will do the exact same thing, but you will not get a built-in screen. That light setup will cost 60 euros and will also include the Pi 02W and SD card. The MT32 Pi is a way of getting upgraded music for computer cores that support external sound modules. Someone is creating a keyboard case dedicated for the Mr. FPGA. It's currently in the planning stages, but he has a video on YouTube demonstrating a version he created for Atari computers and desktop converted computers. He also plans to release the STL files on his Thingiverse page, so you will have the option to 3D print your own. I would love a Mr. setup dedicated to computer cores, and a keyboard setup like this with all keys of his full-size keyboard would be perfect. And other cores getting miscellaneous fixes and updates are, the Mac Plus Core has added serial port support for console and PPP connections, fixes to keyboard and SCSI, a Mac SE mode for completeness sake, floppy access has been fixed, and the framework has been updated so you can use shadow mask and adaptive scan lines. The Apple One's Core's framework has been updated also. This will allow the core to more easily add newer features such as adaptive scan lines. The TRS-80 Core has also had its framework updated. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro-related content. 
and if possible, support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.